I am Shane McGalley. And I am David Keener. And Merry Christmas. Um, <laughs> I don't know when you're going to actually watch this episode, but uh, it will be Christmas Eve if you they, watch Listen, our viewers Christmas are, Christmas. they don't care if it's Christmas Eve or not. They will be waiting for their subscri subscription notice. So we've uploaded a video, right? That's right. Oh. Both of you. So crack <laughs> beer and, and drink with us. Yes. That's right. So tonight it's uh, Christmas happy hour. Uh, I'll raise a toast to my uh, uh, fellow uh, uh, podcasters because we also missed our two year anniversary. <laughs> we forgot to note it. We blazed right by it. So uh, when was it? It, it was uh, November 9th. It, it does not feel like we've been doing this for two years. Do you guys agree? Like, it feels like we just started. Yeah, I know. It's ridiculous. It's, you know, well, it's now it's over 100 episodes. It's crazy. It's been a hundred, over 100 episodes? Yeah. Stop it. Dang. I think tonight it's like 110. And we still like each other? No, <laughs> not so much. Yeah. I, I'm in it for the for the marketing. Yeah, exactly. And, and also, so that I can uh, you know, climb your coattails up into the uh, the, the realm of the best selling writers. Oh, man. What well, yeah, party? There's martinis up there. <laughs> That's right. There is. And I make a really crappy martini, too. Wait, it's didn't like you? Mostly vodka. If, Mar, didn't you say that you have like spicy olives in there or something? Yes, these olives um, have garlic and jalapenos in them. So, I don't know how you do it? I, they're really awesome. Good. I love it. And uh, uh, my wife does, does just don't even open that jar in front of her because <laughs> they're really hot. I mean, very spicy, very spicy. I do. I can't do green olives. I can do black olives, but I cannot do green olives. Yep, the, the I don't like olives. The, you can all. actually see in this one, it's got a whole slice of uh, jalapeno in there. Oh, my and God. That was gross. Clove of garlic. I disapprove of this message. My name is Shane. I disapprove of this message. Viewers, don't try this at home. This right, was done exactly. in a closed office with trained professionals. So Mario's got a martini. I have the, what's left of my uh, brandy from uh, e &J Brandy. And Dave has very, very old beer. Vienna Lager. Uh, well, that's three years old. I didn't know beer could last that long. Well... Yeah, yeah, I, I actually so. have uh, a 12, pack, 12 beers in my fridge. I got some Coronas and some Yingling. Last weekend, I had some friends um, uh, staying over, uh, visiting from Indiana. Okay. And, um, I, you know, I didn't know what kind of beverages they like. So we, uh, you know, loaded up on sodas and beers and wine and all kinds of stuff. And oddly enough, he drank bourbon. Hmm. Ah, there you go. And he actually brought a bottle of bourbon with him, and it was really good. You're coming in. So By the we way, had uh, bourbon and cigars out on the deck. It was awesome. Wish I was there. By the way, the, the joke about the state, I, I grew up in Delaware, and so there's any number of times where I told people, you know, they said, well, where are you from? I said, oh, I'm, I'm from Delaware. And they're like, what state is that in? Like, they literally didn't realize that Delaware was a state. Well, you, you know, when you're driving, Dave, and you're on the highway, you see a Welcome to Delaware sign pass by you. A couple of seconds later, you see, thanks for visiting Delaware. <laughs> it's like... Uh, that's only on I-95, crossing one little corner of the state. Yeah, and that's right. That's crossing right. Delaware to get to the beach. So they're 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 in Delaware for at least a couple of hours before they get to the beach. All right. I won't hate on Delaware. The peninsula. Peninsula. Very fancy. I don't on Delaware. I don't live there anymore, so... There's, you live in Ashburn, right? I do live in Ashburn. That's where the rich people live. That's right. And now you've given away all my secrets to all my stalkers. Well, maybe they'll buy a book, you know? And come, I would I would let them write in. I'd say, hey, come on in. I got lots of books you can buy, and I'll sign them for you right here. <laughs> so you guys got any big plans for Christmas this year? Christmas. 
Um, no, we're going to stay home. Um, I'm doing, I, well, I, every year I have a, like a list that I send out for my, uh, my parents because they always say they have no idea what to get me because my interests are so bizarre. And this year I put on a popcorn making machine on, on my wish list. You know, one of those freestanding, like old timey big ones. Yeah, yeah, the kind yeah. that, you know, yeah, vendors would use. My mom is like horrified to have this thing in her house. I don't know. I, we'll see if Santa brings it or not because we're very against it at the moment. But, you know, it's it's only thing on the list. So we have to. A lot of pressure too, so maybe yeah, I, always, I always give my wife a really long list. You know, I'll compile a list of stuff as the years go, but as the year uh, happens, and because yeah. I like to be surprised, you know, yeah, that's fine. yeah, yeah. I only get a, an item or two on the list or yeah. something that she really surprises me with, and yeah, uh, that's fine, it's really uh fun. But well, if uh, you get a popcorn making machine and I don't, I'm gonna be very upset. I won't do any more episodes with you. Yeah, I should have had one in my old house. Dave would needs one at his house in the home theater. Yeah. Down at his I bar. One, one, one. You need a popcorn making machine, or said. Um I could do that. Mostly I just do microwave popcorn. Which I think it tastes fresh. The microwave is about ten feet from the uh, theater. I think it tastes fresher and it's funner to watch. Like have you ever got you guys ever done Jiffy Pop? You know, where you're going yeah. like this on the Yeah. On the I love that shit. Yeah, that Jiffy Pop's great to take camping. Oh, yeah, it's, totally. It, it's really a, excellent uh, when you're camping. In fact, I got a lot of camping stuff on my list because yeah. I love camping, go camping yeah. a lot. Yes, he also blogs about uh, old man camping trips. That's right. I got, a, I got another uh, YouTube channel that uh, has uh, old guy camping adventures um that's uh that's fun and i uh, i enjoy doing those and it's like ridiculous fun i actually got myself a gopro to uh to record those episodes because gotta have a gopro that's super fun i love it and gotta I, have I a gopro just... gotta have an e-bike it seems like I, everybody that does truck camping is getting e-bikes it's pretty funny hmm. now you need a drone too yeah drone I actually have a drone. Mine's too small, though. I, uh, My brother just just uh, brought over his new drone. It's like thirteen hundred bucks, uh, battery powered, uh, yep. small, like four K camera. Uh, it takes it takes awesome pictures. He he brought it over and, and uh, but it's also one of those ones where it's POV. So you put on the goggles and you have the stick, and it's like as he says, it's like you're flying. And oh you're really? Around the trees. I I ha I haven't tried one of those. My brother has a has a cool one that uh, yeah. um, it is an autonomous drone because it you know he has his um Android tablet where you you know you you don't really fly it. You you just point the coordinates that you want it to the route that you want it to go, and you say go. And, you know, you, you tell it the elevation you want, the route that it goes, and it comes right back and just lands right where you, where it took off. It's pretty wild. Yeah, you I can see have to physically I... fly it anymore. The one I have, you have to physically fly it. And it's, even though I got a screen that's a 1080p screen, it's it's hard to fly. Yeah. It mine's, knows, mine's a small one. The POV is a lot easier to fly. I, I think the kind your brother has is more useful for like if you want to program some kind of approach to photograph something you know or to video something in a certain way um then that's really good for that yeah it's really wild you can do stuff like okay follow me you know and it'll follow the the base station wherever you go if you're like a snowboarder or whatever it'll follow you down the slopes and stuff or, and stuff like that it's pretty wild I went to best buy on other? black friday and or it was the day after was it Black Friday or was it the day after? I don't know. I think it was maybe the, the afternoon of Black Friday. It was picked clean. I mean, everything off the shelf and like not organized. Things on the floor, like chaos, like a jungle really? of. But the drones were, you know, safely behind their plexiglass because they had high price tags 
There was no Black Friday deals on on those suckers. Uh, yeah, my, a really good drone would cost a couple thousand dollars. Really, that's right. My brother's drone, which is you know pretty functional, is you know and high end from my perspective, was thirteen hundred bucks. Right now, he yeah. he can do really impressive things with it, but you know. It, it's going to cost you some money for that kind of quality. Yeah, they got all kinds of them that you can mount a GoPro on. Um, a lot of them come with their, you know, integrated 4K cameras as well, and gimbals and all kinds of uh, uh, stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really wild uh, um, uh, how realtors use drones all the time now for, you know, checking out houses and stuff like that. There's oh know, yeah, making videos. Yeah, he gave me a video of my of my roof, which you know, since I just replaced the roof, it looked good. But you know, <laughs> now guys, I want to point out that Marty's background is not very different than his real life house, like with all the the, the beautifully decorated Christmas tree with so many lights on it, garland everywhere. I think it's one of the most impressive Christmas displays I've ever seen with your how many trees do you have 12 or something last year we had 14. 14. my wife only counts 12 because she doesn't count the three foot tall ones the little ones okay um, I count every tree if it's got lights and it's got ornaments I it agree counts. are they all last up right year now? was 14. now here this is a sad 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 story oh no um a couple weeks ago we uh, were going to a wedding, my niece's wedding, and it was in uh, Luray, Virginia. So, we, you know, it was a couple hours away from where we live. We decided that we were going to, you know, make a romantic date out of it. We um, uh, reserved a room in this retro 1950s motel. It was great. You know, we slept in because it was an evening wedding. And... Uh, we slept in, we went to brunch at a mom and pop diner that was fabulous, excellent food. Casually um, drove back home through the Shenandoah and just really enjoyed the sights on the way back. We walk in the house and our house is flooded. Our, our kitchen is an inch deep in water and uh, it, you know, went down into the basement and destroyed two rooms in the basement. Mm. So insurance covering the whole thing. What's that? Were the Christmas trees okay? Uh, no Christmas trees were damaged. The okay. problem is we're not going to be having all of the Christmas trees up that we had last year mm. because all the hardwood floors on the main level are ruined. And um, they're going to have to be ripping up all the hardwood floors and um, uh, replacing them. And it's going to be a giant mess, not to mention all the drywall downstairs in the basement and all the paint and all the hassle. And uh, it hasn't been done for that long either. What's that? Your basement. I know. I, you know, I just refinished my basement not long ago. And it was my pride and joy because everything was so perfect it's like it's like having the car of your dreams and you get your first big dent in it um well this seems like more than a dent dude yeah i know it is it's you know i uh i think that it's like seventeen thousand dollars damage it's so when you're sure it's stupid water line for my ice maker and my refrigerator mm. and talk about Wait. being embarrassed it you know, the, the the leak happened inside the refrigerator component where the water filter goes in, right? It filled up all the drawers in my refrigerator, and then it overflowed the drawers and started filling up the refrigerator until it started leaking out of the sides of the doors. You know how they close magnetically and everything? That's like a hermetic seal, man. It just really is impressive. You know, you open the refrigerator and it's the waterfalls. It's uh, it's funny, it, but it's not funny. It's funny, but it's not funny. Uh, uh, we are pretty lucky though. Down in the basement, 
um lucky we had in these in the two two worst rooms both of them had large persian rugs right and they soaked up i don't know how many gallons of water <laughs> that leaked down through the ceiling and it's really wild because um i had this i had this industrial shop back that that sucked up uh, must have been a hundred gallons of water and um, you know we were dumping it outside as fast as we could do it. And one of my friends on Facebook said, "Hey, here's what you got to do: go to Home Depot and rent this industrial dehumidifier thing. You know, insurance will cover it. Go, go get one right now." So I got this thing. I mean, it's huge. I mean, it's like four feet tall and three feet square, and it looks like a droid from Star Wars. And so I set that thing up in there and put it on max. And it was really wild because um, I had poked holes in the ceiling because there was light or there was waterfalls coming down through the light fixtures down there, you know, and through the smoke detector and stuff. I mean, it was a nightmare. And uh, so I poked holes with a screwdriver through the drywall and had five gallon buckets that we were emptying and and finally the lake that was up there uh um you know started slowing down and when we went to bed i had about two inches of water in the bottom of those two five gallon buckets so it was still dripping in the morning the dehumidifier had done such a good job everything was dried out and the buckets didn't have any water left in them <laughs> that's how effective the stupid thing was and uh, so it was a colossal nightmare. And God bless Brenda, because uh, you know my my wife is a collector, and she collects vintage Barbie dolls, and she has a, a metric ton of them. And none of them got damaged. None of the Christmas ornaments got damaged or anything. What about but, books? What's that? What about books? No books got damaged. Thank God. I mean. There, there could have been such a colossal destruction and the water decided to leak down from the kitchen above into the places that were the best for it to happen. And uh, we were pretty lucky that it's just drywall and, you know, oak flooring that's, that's hosed. It could have been a lot worse because no personal possessions actually got destroyed. So when you have insurance that's covering, you know, your your new wooden floors that are being replaced, are you how much how much freedom do you have to select what you want your replacement floor to be? Well, it's like for like, and my house it has real, um, you know, it's like three quarter inch actual oak flooring. You know, I thought they were going to come through and just sand it and refinish it or something, but the individual planks that are about this wide they're cut and warp and stuff so they're going to replace all of those in the kitchen that's real you know, good in my entire kitchen they'll replace all that but then they're going to take all the furniture out of the entire main level and refinish the entire floor and the entire level and it's going to be a colossal hassle and we're going to try to time it so that it happens after New Year's mm -hmm. so that we can have Christmas at least on the main level, <coughs> which means we'll probably only have like seven trees this year. Oh, tragedy. Only seven. Only seven. Only seven. But it really, it really broke Brenda's heart. You know, it's really, yeah. she's really looking forward to it. Normally, um, Normally, the week uh, after uh, uh, Thanksgiving is when uh, decorating gets uh, fired up in earnest, and it and it didn't happen like that. So, so it's only seven trees this year. Okay, gotcha. Um, what do you guys think about this whole? Like, it started out with Hallmark movies, and now it's like Netflix is doing it. Everyone's making these same formulaic, you know, movies with the busy, businessy city woman going to the small town, 
cute little Christmas town, falling in love with the guy who is in flannel, who runs the lodge that's going to be foreclosed upon. Brendan and I watch those every year. (laughs) There's drinking games associated with them. Yeah. Oh, when they sing carols, you got to drink. When you when they have a snowball fight, you got to drink. Oh, when somebody bakes cookies, you got to drink. Oh my gosh, I love it. When they have a talent show, you got to drink. You know, there's there's all these things you can look those up on the internet. I I love it. I I know it's dumb, but I love it. I I I love watching those cheesy things during the holidays. Yeah, we always watch. We always watch. It's a Wonderful Life every year. You know, um, probably three different versions of a Christmas Carol, and um, well, it's a wonderful life. Is a little bit different than the usual uh, formula. You're, Shay was talking about the kind of the rom com, you yeah, know, the rom com Christmas uh, Christmas uh, movies you know, on Hallmark. The, the possibly could be Santa in disguise sightings. Old man, yes, exactly, yes, I love those. And, and, um, and the whoa. Make your Christmas wish. Yes. Um, yeah, I, if you look on Amazon, there's hundreds of those things. Because they, they have not just only theirs, but also, you know, years and years worth of them. I mean, I think it's something to say about, I don't know. I mean, like in Query, I don't think many people expected these type of movies to become so popular. But it Query struck a chord with people just wanting some kind of simple... No one gets killed. Yeah, it's the Harlequin romance of, uh, you know, Christmas movies. Uh, And they're happy. They always have happy endings. You know, usually they're, you know, widowed parents meet each other and fall in love, too, in a secondary plot. (laughs) But Netflix has something just a little bit different. They have the CSU. What's that? That's the Christmas Shared Universe. Because most of the Netflix uh, Christmas movies reference each other really i didn't know that yeah. so they'll reference you know they'll have these little throwaway references to last year's christmas movie or you'll see a news uh, item flash about a married couple from i did not Aunt know that who who is the, the couple that the uh, that met uh, and got married you know the, the previous year or, i love that or last year's movie will actually be a movie that the, the the family is watching on tv but you only catch a little clip from it so yeah, they've got sort of a Netflix shared universe. Yeah, it's funny. We were watching one of those. You know, we we watch a lot of those in the season. You know, usually while Brenda's decorating trees and stuff like that, they're usually on the TV. And you know, I, a lot of times after the fifth one in a row, you're kind of not paying attention. I'm sitting there on my laptop, thinking around on Facebook, and Brenda goes, "Marty, Marty, Marty, look!" I look up at the screen. And it's taking place at this uh, hotel in Utah that Brenda and I actually stayed at once oh. when we were in Utah. And it's yeah. like, oh, my God, they really filmed this this thing at that hotel because I recognized a whole bunch of uh, stuff, the, uh, the exteriors and the interiors and the things. And uh, apparently it's a lot cheaper to actually – Film snowy places in snowy places. Who would have thought? Who would have I mean, I think what you're saying is true too. That like the appeal of it is that you can totally zone out for 20 minutes and still and hop back in and not have missed anything. Like you know exactly what's going on. I think that's also very appealing. Right. You know. Yeah. This year, I also saw the sequel to A Christmas Story. It's called A Christmas Story Christmas, and it has the same little kid that, you know, was in it, but he's a grown-up now. It was really good. I highly recommend it. I watched the new Lindsay Wohan one, and let me just say that we're supportive of her being back. We love a comeback, right? What's it called? What's the title of that? See first, can we give her a little, and she's had a rough go. That's right. We love a comeback. It's Welcome kind back. of ironic that we're toasting her with alcohol. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Welcome back, Lindsay. Um, it was called Falling for Christmas, I think. I think so. I'm bringing up IMDb right now. It was pretty contrived. 
it, but it but it worked. It ticked all the boxes, but it was pretty contrived. All the and then there's always like the token um like menorah somewhere in a window or something, just chilling. Hey, anyway. we have a menorah. I my, have one too. My kids, my kids' grandfather uh, uh, was Jewish. Okay. And uh, so we always uh, celebrated with him. And uh, my kids learned all about it. And uh, we did the whole candle thing. That's awesome. Uh, I have uh, a menorah and I light it every year. Uh, I light it every year as well because Pierre, my service dog, was raised by a Jewish uh, woman. And so I always said that I would carry on his Jewish tradition. So every year we do it together, me and Pierre. And I send her pictures. And she always replies, your dog is more Jewish than I am now. <laughs> it's just so funny. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful tradition. I don't have any Kwanzaa traditions yet. I don't have any connections to Kwanzaa. Not yet. So what else is happening? Chris, what's your Christmas Eve and Christmas Day usually like? Well, we have a Christmas tradition in my family. We always yeah. go to the movies on Christmas Day. What's that? We always go to the movies on Christmas Day. Oh, really? Oh, that's, yeah. that's fun. I mean, mostly it was uh, when I was a kid, it was, you know, you open your presents, you have a nice meal. And then mom kicks you out of the house because she's tired of dealing with people. <laughs> yes. Well, since my, my kids are grown up and, you know, living in California now, uh, Brenda and I have started a new tradition where we usually get um, like a party platter of something so we don't have to cook all day. And it is awesome. I One year we got a ginormous Costco party platter of shrimp and uh, i thought i would never never uh you know have enough shrimp ever you know shrimp cocktail i thought i could eat that to infinity i found out that's not true so we watch movies we watch movies and uh and hang out after we open presents and uh relax it's uh fun yeah we also have a i guess other people may do the traditional turkey or whatever for Christmas, just like they do at Thanksgiving. We do steak. We're not big turkey people. Plan approved. We you do steak. Steak for Thanksgiving too, right? Didn't you say that? Uh, well, no, we did. My wife is Scottish, so we did steak and ale pies for Thanksgiving oh. uh, with the uh, potatoes, and then we did, we'll do steak and the the whole you know salad and, and uh, baked potatoes and everything for um, for Christmas. Yeah, when, if we were going to have like a Christmas dinner and invite friends over and stuff, we do sometimes. Um, a lot of times we get one of those those really awesome spiral cut hams from yeah. Honey Bake Hams. Those things are awesome. Yeah, we've, we've done that before too. If we haven't done steak, we've done the spiral hams. Those are very nice. And they're great for sandwiches too afterwards. Yeah, yeah. super, super leftovers. And Plus we like ham sandwiches. Stuff that's great. We like ham sandwiches a lot more than we like turkey sandwiches, so the leftovers actually get used. <laughs> we usually make turkey soup. Hmm. After Thanksgiving, oh. uh, I made a really great pot I've of never had uh, that. Uh, turkey soup. It was awesome. What do you put in turkey soup? Is it like chicken noodle? Uh, no, no, no noodles. Actually, you know, because I'm, you know, fat, trying to lose weight, so cutting down on carbs. Um, take all the turkey that's left over, cube it up. Toss it in in a pot. Add all of the gravy that's left over. Oh. Use that as the starter for your uh, for your broth. I oh. usually cut up uh, peppers and onions and any of the other leftover vegetables that we have from uh, Thanksgiving. Jalapenos? Uh, yes. No, because <laughs> Brenda, she is not. Yeah, I can add and I usually add hot sauce to my soup. Uh, at the table but you know like uh, celery and you know any other uh, vegetables we have around and it came out really good this year I, I loved it 
It's good cool. with Save leftover it. bread from Thanksgiving too. Hmm. Save some for me next time. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, have well, we all been nice my enough? My martini's gone, and it's either oh. going to be make another martini because I've been eating a lot of these olives. Um, uh, but yeah, it's uh, Christmas Eve. Merry uh, Christmas, for, everyone. Thanks. Merry Christmas, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Christmas Eve. And um, that's it. Do you have anything big on your Christmas list this year that you're going to hope to get tomorrow from Santa? I'll be popping. That's the goal. What about you, Dave? Well, we have this uh, uh, tradition. Uh, I tell my wife what she bought me for uh, for Christmas, and she tells me what I bought her. <laughs> and then we wrap it up. <laughs> we need to do that one year. We That'd should, you know, we should each, like, set a budget and then buy our own gifts, wrap right. them, put them under the tree, yep. and then open them on uh, Christmas Day. And I would be equally equally surprised at what I bought Brendan. You know? Exactly. I mean, it, it's just, you know, there, there's two of us, you know. Yeah. And That's how it is over here, too. We're not, like, filthy, stinking rich, but in general, we buy the things that we want. So... Yeah, I know. That's the problem when you get get to be this this uh, age. You know, I already have two of everything I ever wanted, and uh, it's hard to it's hard to really uh to you know. Well, aren't, find aren't we blessed that I want for Christmas? What? Aren't we blessed? <laughs> I am blessed big time. I am the luckiest guy in the known universe, and at the same time, I'm trying to downsize. I got too much crap. Yeah. Well, yeah. should we? It says the guy who sold a bunch of gaming stuff to me. That's right. That's right. Hey, uh, gaming stuff. It, here's some news. I've got a new king size bed. That tonight is the first night I'm going to be sleeping on my new Sealy Posturpedic. Lovely. And I'm very excited about it. Our old, our old king size bed mattress was just too soft. And yeah, if if we traveled back in a time machine. And told your twenty-year-old self how, you know, forty-two years later, how excited you were about getting a a, a, a new mattress, a, a new mattress. Yeah, twenty-year-old self would be like, "Oh man, how did I get so boring?" Wait a second. That's wait right. a second. Wait a second. I'm in my twenties, and I love a good mattress. <laughs> my mattress is great. <laughs> I I would I would be your twenty-year-old self, Marty. I bet would be just as excited as you are yeah, right now. You know, when we when we uh, moved to the new house, um, we actually bought a new mattress for the first time in like fifteen years, and uh, it's too soft. And gravity affects me a lot more than Brenda, so the gravity well creates a hole around me, and she ends up tumbling into it, which is okay by me. I was going to say, I, I, was, I was failing to see the downside there. <laughs> yeah, until she starts hot flashing, he says yeah. quietly. <laughs> very quietly. You're, you're, you know, you're it's, nice it's very problematic when uh, somebody's sleeping on top of you, bursts into flames. So. <laughs> well, we should sing, we wish you a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. We, we wish you a Merry Christmas. Nobody wants to hear me sing. A Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thanks, everybody. All right. Merry Christmas, all. Bye. And to all, a good night.